Two countries, one destination aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9. Two lunar landers have been launched into orbit aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9, marking the beginning of their historic journey. These missions represent the next giant leap for humanity since the Apollo missions. How will they achieve this monumental feat? Join me today as we embark on this exciting journey. The journey to the moon, aptly named Ghost Riders in the Sky. A historic moment. On Wednesday, January 15th, at 1.11 a.m. Eastern Time, SpaceX's Falcon 9 successfully launched Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost Mission 1 from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Jason Kim, CEO of Firefly Aerospace, expressed his gratitude to SpaceX, stating, We want to thank SpaceX for a spot on deployment in our target orbit. He added that the mission is now in the hands of the unstoppable Firefly team. After extensive testing and mission simulations, the team is fully focused on executing the mission, which includes completing on-orbit operations, softly touching down on the lunar surface, and paving the way for humanity's return to the moon. The mission also carried Japan's resilience lunar lander to its destination. This launch marked the fifth flight for the Falcon 9 first-stage booster supporting this mission. SpaceX's success in this mission represents not one, but two significant steps toward the moon. Blue Ghost and its objectives. Let's first examine the U.S. side of this endeavor. Firefly's inaugural Blue Ghost mission, humorously named Ghost Riders in the Sky, will deliver 10 science and technology instruments to the lunar surface as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLPS, initiative. Blue Ghost is a class of lunar landers designed and manufactured by Firefly Aerospace. Standing 2 meters 6.6 .6 feet tall and 3.5 meters 11.5 feet wide, Blue Ghost is engineered for precise landings, featuring shock-absorbing feet, a low center of mass, and a wide footprint. Its core components, panels, struts, legs, harnesses, avionics, batteries, and thrusters, are built using many of the same flight-proven technologies found in Firefly's launch and orbital vehicles. This commonality helps reduce costs while enhancing reliability. Blue Ghost was successfully launched into a highly elliptical Earth orbit by Falcon 9 and has now begun its approximately 45-day journey to the Moon, where it will land in Mare Crisium. There, it will deploy NASA's payloads to perform numerous science and technology demonstrations. Blue Ghost Journey since being launched into orbit, Blue Ghost has made significant progress. On January 15, 2025, Firefly's Blue Ghost captured its first image from space, revealing the lander's top deck and showcasing the X-band antenna and NASA's Lexi payload. On January 17, 2025, Blue Ghost's fluid and propulsion systems were successfully primed. The bipropellant priming process ensures that fuel and oxidizer are properly distributed to the engines, preparing them for the first burn. This initial burn will help calibrate the propulsion system in advance of a critical maneuver the following week, which will raise the spacecraft's Earth orbit apogee and bring it closer to the moon. On January 18th, Firefly announced a major milestone. Big win for the Ghost Riders. The Firefly team successfully completed Blue Ghost's first burn with our RCS thrusters and main engine hitting within 2 millimeters per second of our target Delta V on the first try. This burn increased the lander's perigee, the closest point to Earth, and prepared it for the next critical maneuver. After completing 25 of the 45-day journey in Earth orbit, Blue Ghost will begin its four-day lunar transit. Upon reaching lunar orbit, it will spend another 16 days conducting health checks on each subsystem, calibrating the propulsion system, and beginning payload science operations before initiating the hour-long descent to the lunar surface. Mare Crisium The chosen landing site is Mare Crisium, a lunar mare located in the moon's Crisium Basin. Mare Crisium, or the Sea of Crises, is one of the smaller lunar maria with a diameter of only 556 kilometers. Its well-defined outline makes it easily recognizable from Earth as a small dark spot on the moon's edge. Thanks to its flat basin, Mare Crisium is an ideal location for landing vehicles on the moon. An intriguing fact about this area is its proximity to Mare Tranquilitatis, the site where the historic Apollo 11 mission landed. 
It was there that astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made their famous journey to the moon, marking one of humanity's greatest achievements. A 14-day mission, Blue Ghost will remain on the moon for 14 days. Why 14 days? Because it represents a complete lunar day. A lunar day is the time it takes for Earth's moon to complete one rotation on its axis. Have you ever noticed that you always see only one side of the moon? The time it takes for the moon to orbit around itself is approximately 28 days, and the time it takes for it to orbit Earth is the same. Because the moon's rotation and revolution times are identical, we only see one side of it, which explains the concept of the far side of the moon. If we divide the lunar cycle into a lunar day and a lunar night, a lunar day lasts about 14 Earth days. During this time, Blue Ghost will perform several science and technology demonstrations with the payloads it carries. Science and Technology Demonstrations One of the key demonstrations involves subsurface drilling using a device with a very fancy name, the Lunar Instrumentation for Subsurface Thermal Exploration with Rapidity, or LASER for short. LASER is designed to use a pneumatic excavation system to place heat flow probes 2 to 3 meters deep in the lunar regolith. Its primary objective is to measure the heat flow out of the moon, including thermal conductivity and thermal gradient at various depths. To collect samples on the moon, a device akin to a vacuum cleaner will be used. Developed by Honeybee Robotics, the Lunar Planet Vac is a pneumatic, compressed gas-powered sample acquisition and delivery system. It agitates lunar soil using pressurized gas, generating a mini-tornado that efficiently directs material into a sample container. This technology offers many advantages, particularly for in-situ operations. Dennis Harris, who oversees the LPV payload for NASA's CLPS initiative at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, explained, there's no digging, no mechanical arm to wear out, requiring servicing or replacement. It functions like a vacuum cleaner. He added that this technology could benefit the search for water, helium, and other resources, providing a clearer picture of in-situ materials available for fabricating lunar habitats and launch pads. This expands scientific knowledge and practical exploration of the solar system. Additional payloads and instruments. Another payload is the Lunar Environment Heliospheric X-ray Imager, LEXI, a wide field of view soft X-ray telescope developed by Boston University, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, and Johns Hopkins University. LEXI will study solar wind magnetosphere coupling by capturing a series of X-ray images. These images will provide insights into the interaction of solar wind and Earth's magnetic field, which drives geomagnetic disturbances and storms. LEXI will deliver the first global images showing the edge of Earth's magnetic field, offering critical insights into how space, weather, and other cosmic forces surrounding our planet impact Earth. To protect the vehicle from lunar dust, Blue Ghost will use the Electrodynamic Dust Shield, EDS, built by NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The EDS uses a pattern of electrodes to generate a wave-like electric field that pushes dust off surfaces. Dust particles near the EDS electrodes experience a dielectrophoretic force generated by the non-uniform electric field around the electrode grid. This force depends on the square of the electrostatic potential difference between adjacent electrodes and the inverse cube of the electrode geometric parameters, such as electrode separation. Thus, for a given force, a decrease in electrode separation results in a substantial decrease in the voltage required to operate the EDS. In addition to dust removal, the EDS will apply lunar dust to these surfaces using a new method. The EDS will be deployed from the lander's fifth leg and positioned directly on the lunar surface to ensure optimal dust contact. Other activities will include capturing high-definition imagery of a total eclipse from the moon, where Earth blocks the sun, or capturing the lunar sunset. The Ghost Riders in the Sky Mission The Ghost Riders in the Sky Mission is one of four task orders awarded to Firefly by NASA's CLPS program, contributing to NASA's Artemis campaign. This initiative is crucial in establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon and advancing preparations for future Mars exploration. Japan's Contribution Hakuto Mission 2 I almost forgot to mention our Japanese companion joining Blue Ghost on Falcon 9. Resilience, part of the Hakuto Mission 2. This lunar lander and rover mission 
is a follow-on to the 2022 Mission 1. The Mission 2 lander is an upgraded version of the 1,000 kg is space Hakuto lander used on Mission 1. Resilience carries three primary payloads, a water electrolyzer experiment, an algae-based food production module, and a deep space radiation monitor. These are all critical for establishing a permanent base on the moon. The water electrolyzer experiment will attempt to extract water on the moon, a significant step for future lunar habitation. Water is essential for drinking and living, and transporting it from Earth for long-term lunar stays would be prohibitively expensive and impractical. Additionally, water can be separated into hydrogen and oxygen through electrolysis using solar energy, providing breathable air and rocket fuel. Analyzing lunar ice will also offer valuable information about the Moon's impact history and the abundance of comets and asteroids in the early solar system. The algae-based food production module will conduct a food production experiment on the moon, another vital step for sustaining human life. Mission 2 also carries a 5 kilograms rover named Tenacious, securely housed in the payload bay at the top of the lander. The rover measures 26 centimeters in height, 31.5 centimeters in width, and 54 centimeters in length, and is constructed from carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Equipped with a forward-mounted HD camera, Tenacious will transmit data back to Earth via the lander. A shovel mounted at the front of the rover will collect lunar samples, captured in high definition by the camera for analysis. Attached to the rover is a small art piece named Moonhouse, reflecting Japan's love for small, intricate designs. Additionally, Resilience carries a commemorative alloy plate developed by Bandai Namco Research Institute, Inc., modeled after the charter of the Universal Century from the anime series Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. Although Resilience departed at the same time as Blue Ghost, its journey will last several months, arriving at the moon much later. A global effort. These missions highlight that the moon is not just the destination of one country, but a shared goal for all of humanity. They represent major steps toward the moon, a celestial body seen as a gateway to more distant entities in the solar system. Together, these efforts pave the way for a future where humanity can sustainably explore and inhabit the moon and beyond.